Hey guys, it's me Kate again. So in this video, we will be talking about most surprising books of 2021. Um, between me filming this and you seeing this every year, there probably will be some more, but I'm not expecting it to so. Let's begin. First we have a Hidden Gem series by Lisa Casey. So basically before this year I never heard of their daughter except once when I googled books with Kitsunes. I think that's the problem. You'll see that book soon in this video. But basically in Hidden and so I went into to her books with basically no expectations. So Hidden Gem series is about a gay male stripper uh, who has these uh, supernatural powers uh, which uh, when he touches something he can see the his its history and with that uh, he actually helps the police and it's a romance between him and one of the detectives on the case he's helping with. Then we have Siege and Storm by Leigh Bardugo. That is first book in Grisha Wars. I think that's the first one. Or is it... Oh, Shadow and Bone is first one. And Siege and Storm is the second one. So in this year as well, we're following a girl called Alina who uh, discovers she's a Grisha and in this world Grishas are people who have powers and then she gets involved in this political plot line. Then we have the, the uh, Raven and the Dove by Kaylin Davis which is uh, a paranormal romance in world where people live above the clouds on these basically islands and uh, they have wings and depending which type of wings they have they are they live on a certain uh, island and um, one dove and one raven fall in love and it's a uh, Tristan and Isuald retelling. Then we have One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. So Casey McQuiston is an author uh, who wrote The Red White and Royal Blue which he also read in 2021 but that one uh, compared to all the hype it was getting was really underwhelming it because to me it was okay and one last, uh, everybody who loves that one said that one last stop was worse. For me this was the exception f from the rule that female female romances don't usually work for me one out of two that happened this year uh, and actually I enjoyed it more than the red, white and blue compared to the all the hype and criticism that is getting and that it is getting. Then we have Ace of Space by Fadira Aike Mire uh, uh, which I read for a book club I was a part of and Without that I would probably, probably not even try uh, reading this book because uh, the premise to me sounded really, really boring and uninteresting but it ended up being a really good book. Oh, I haven't told you what One Last Stop is about. One Last, last Stop is... is it's about this young woman who rides bus, uh, rides subway on her way to her work when she uh, 
develops crush on one another one of the passengers who ends up being stuck in a time loop ever since the 70s and in Ace of Spades we are following two teenagers who are only two black kids in their school uh, one is on scholarship the other one is rich I think um, and then uh, and something and someone starts to uh, send these anonymous messages about them around the school but the only lead they have is uh, that uh, the person uh, calls itself, uh, itself aces so they don't know what that is and they decide to investigate who actually and uh, aces is and why are they why is why are they uh, the target uh, then we have outlander by diana gal hold on so basically i heard i think that they already knows what outlander is about it's about this woman who Charles back in time in medieval Scotland and falls in love with a guy. So I heard a lot of things about um, Outlander. Not particularly good, but not also particularly bad reviews. Like if uh, for every person I heard. They loved it, I also heard the person who said that they didn't, they didn't love it. So basically it was 50-50 on that, but, uh, and I know about the show. And I was like, it has a show, a show it has been aired in Croatia, I'm not sure if it still is on, but I know it was on TV at some point and and I was like, sure, I'll try it. And I actually was pleasantly surprised. Then we have Indigo by Beverly Jenkins, uh, which is about a woman and a man working for underground, uh, with underground rail, rail, railroad and Basically, he gets injured on uh, while he was working, and she was the closest person who lived in that area. So they brought him to her, and she basically nursed him back to health. I uh, heard good things about Beverly Jenkins' books, but I was like, huh? I like I was. Like never particularly interesting in interested in them, and when I saw that they had the uh, audiobook on script, I decided to take the chance and listen to it, and was pleasantly surprised. Then I have the ballerina and the biker by Rebecca James, I think, which is basically. So we have um, one male character who is a ballet dancer and basically his brother gets killed and his brother was in this motorcycle club and because uh, the rival mo NC club is, is um, going a, uh is really uh, against uh, his older brother who died because uh, on that uh, the one of the other club's members was on the bike with him when he died and also that person also died so um, brothers friends from the club took our main uh, our main character we have them because when the rival club finds out they try to kill him 
and in the end it's his romance with one of the members of the club. Then we have uh, uh, Romancing a Curse series by Lisa Casey, uh, which actually the first book was published in 2020. So basically it's happening during the pandemic as it's going. Uh, basically we have this main character who inherits a house from his friend who died recently and she decided not to have kids because apparently her family is cursed and she thinks that if she gives her house to him the, the curse will break and it's and then he comes and basically he meets people who actually work on the in and around the house because apparently that old lady was rich and uh, stuff and then he decides okay I'm gonna keep everybody here because why would he let go of people who have been working here for God knows how long. Uh, some some have been working there longer than he has been alive. So and so he and basically it's the woman. Uh, it's basically him uh, having the romance with someone in that cursed house. Then we have a Simply Crafty series by Lisa Casey, uh, which is basically we start with our one of our main characters who is a war vet and basically he uh, he was in war and now he can see ghosts as a result of his PTSD. Uh, and basically his twin brother introduces him to to a friend who actually runs this business it basically he that friend has a small business uh, regarding like ghosts which is stuff like that and he is having uh, several tours around New Orleans uh, and like particular uh, haunted places but somebody has been harassing him and he needs a guard bodyguard so and uh, like our main character's father was hey my brother has uh, an army experience that will give you him. Like I need to get rid of him from my house, so you can have him. And basically, it's the rom It's ridiculous. Like uh, they have, uh, they get uh, a ghost cat. Um, what else? Oh, they go to co a cosplay uh, convention. Um, some other stuff. Like, I know it's ridiculous. You have to read it to really understand what the hell is happening. Then we have uh, the Pillars of Magic Dominion series by Lisa Casey. I read first two installments in the series. So in this one we're following um, a guy who is an earth witch and his mother isn't too happy about it because she wanted to have a daughter and that's all I can remember. I know that Dominion, Dominion oversees everything but considering I read two out of three or it has to be four, of, four or five installments so yeah 
I'm not that far into it, I still have more to go, so I cannot tell you what everything is about. Yes, I put this in the wrong word. Then we have Kitsune Chronicles by Elisa Casey. If you have been on my channel in the last few months, you might have seen this book and particular this series mentioned a lot. This is my copy that I read on a beach because it was fun and it's not even that short, it's like I think that the third one is longest and that one is just over 300 pages. Nope. It, this one is over 300 pages but the story itself is less because it has a, a part of the second book. In this one so in this series we're following a, a guy named Sebastian who is a kitsune which is Japanese nine-tailed nine fox spirit and something happened to him a year ago we get the story of what happened in the prologue so and ever since then he has been on the run until now and he bumps into Liam who, oopsie daisy, just happens to be the guy who saved him a year ago, but Liam is a werewolf and uh, we get why Sebastian doesn't want to be around him. And also, uh, this series is quite hilarious, especially if you get to through the first book and you get the second book. One of the characters is basically she is uh, she is but she ends up being a comic relief because uh, our character get uh, Sebastian gets really annoyed every time she said something so it's like he, he, he she tells him something and he's like please don't please don't please don't <laughs> and it's like ridiculous I'm sorry I'm spilling stuff on myself but what's new Well, I'm spilling stuff all the time. And we even had the inside joke regarding that in middle school. Let me have All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson, uh, which is about, which is a, me a memoir. Uh, author's, memoir, author's memoir about being black and queer and what is really nice is basically you have you get the pictures from his uh, life in the book so you have uh, I guess there's a part talking about his grandmother and then you have a picture of uh, him with his grandmother and some of the other relatives, which is really cool. And, and I heard some buzz about this book, but enjoy it way more than I expected to. And then we have on these black uh, sands by Vanessa Vassanen. Uh, which is about uh, a lofi who is an heir to the heir uh, council heir and council is this basically a group of women women who uh, are in charge charge of this city and uh, a pirate kept the name that one who 
uh, needs her help to find this dagger. I saw this on Instagram and wanted it in a cute way, basically. And I'm really hoping to read second book soon, even though it's only coming out next year. And then we have Survivor and Survivors Find Love and Pilisa in series Pilisa Casey, which is only her her only contemporary romance series that I read. All others were paranormal. And here we are following a V start with a fire two firefighters uh, going to the funeral of mother of one of them and the other goes uh, to accompany her. Basically it's uh, and they're they're going to say at her nephews. Basically it's uh, moments between the nephew and the the accompanying firefighter. There's the first one but of course it is in whole other direction. And then we have The Hunter and the Mage by Caitlin Davis which is sequel to The Raven and the Dove. Uh, then we have the Organa Secret by Arlen Hooks, also something that I saw on Instagram and one in a giveaway basically. And this uh, one we're following the Organa who lives uh, uh, with her father on uh, his navy ship and the Lieutenant Dominic. Uh, and she's disguised as a boy and a new Lieutenant, Lieutenant Dominic comes actually helps her and basically stuff goes from there. Uh, then we have The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna, which is set in this world where women have this ceremony performed when, where you, they run your blood and if you run, runs red you're safe to say but if it runs gold you're exiled and killed and our main characters run while uh, runs gold but as, but as it turns out there is the whole army of girls like her and she d decides to join it okay then we have fable by I Adrian Young, um, it is about a girl who, whose father basically left her on this island, and now she finally escaped on this of this island, and decides to take what's hers. I really, I heard buzz about it, and that it's good, but I, I didn't expect to enjoy it, enjoy it as much as I did. Then we have Nine Rules to Break by and Romancing the Rake by Sarah McLean, which is a historical romance, between, uh, which is like really funny. So basically, uh, our rake employs our main character to put his half sister into society and Shenanigans in you. Then we have Jay's Gay Agenda by Jason June. I basically heard nothing about this book and I saw it on script and I listened to that and loved it. We are following Jay who li uh, lived in small town was only person out and now he's moved to Seattle because uh, of his parents job uh, jobs and now he has whole community to get into it so he makes an agenda of stuff he wants to do now that he has all this community of people around. Then we have Fans by C.P. Packet and Joanna the Man. So fan series is about a group of boys who are going to the fencing school and basically 
shenanigans are going on in the front, right front and center. Basically, they the guys are ridiculous. So therefore, the captain of the the fencing team, his best friend and roommate. And two of the younger guys who just enrolled, and who are also romance with each other. And basically, you see the panel, the captain and his best friend when have their beds like basically right next to each other. Each other. I was like, is there any like uh, anything between the mattresses? <laughs> and the and Sage and the other guy basically they're rivals basically they because they didn't want to see Nick ever they divide their room by putting a, sh a blue sheet with bunch of, a bunch of rubber ducks on it in the middle of the room. Like, what the hell? And they always have to point that out. Then you have Red Winter by Annette Marie, also something that I found by Googling books with Kitsunes. So basically we are following this girl who, girl who is supposed to be sacrificed as the vessel for the god. But she meets a Kitsune and figures out that not everything is as it seems. Then we have the new kid, uh, new kid by Cherry Craft, which I enjoyed more than I thought I would. I, I heard it's cool, but I was never really interested in it. But Tito and uh, being really cool, Miss Clever following a, a boy who just transfers to new school where, where he's only one of a few black kids. And basically, it's about him adjusting to this new school. And then we have Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. I heard that Robin Hobb's books were good, but I never thought or about reading them because they're chunky. Like uh, Assassin's Apprentice is, I think, about three, two or three hundred pages long, and then second one is already four hundred pages plus. So we, it's basically twice the size. And then this year is we're following uh, Fitzshivari Farsia, who uh, basically at the age of six was led from by his maternal grandfather at keep for his father to go and raise him. But his father, after hearing that his bastard son is coming, abdicates the throne and goes to live in the carch side. Well, I'm not sure decision. And then Fitz sends up being a really weird position up to the certain age when King decides that he would be a good assassin. <laughs> and shenanigans too. The next book I have is What It Be In Fitzas by Becky Abortelli and Adam Silvia, which is about Arthur and Ben who meet in the New York's post office and then go on to a series of disastrous dates. And this ridiculous. I really hope that. Uh, downstairs people don't come here 
and then they are not even in the in the office at the moment. And then the last, but not the least, we have Shine by Jessica Young. So in this one we're following the 17 year old Korean American Rachel Kim who is a K-pop trainee and if her label doesn't debut her now, they probably never will. But and one day when the opportunity presents itself for her to the, uh, to sing a uh, duet with her label's golden boy Jason Lee, she takes it. And Jessica Young was part of Girls' Generation. So that's it for this video. Like if you liked it, like, share, and subscribe. Comment down below and let me know some books that surprised you this year. And I'll see you in the next one.